purpose of this video is to update my first sharpening video with a couple of new sharpeners I picked up. I'm not going to go into real fine detail about the ones I've already went over. I'll just mention them again. But I did pick a couple of others up. And I also wanted to mention a few that weren't mentioned in the first video. The ones that I like to use the most are these two, which I mentioned in the first video. The Easy Lap Diamond Rod, which screws out of the handle and back onto the handle, and the DMT Fine and Super Fine for finishing, and then I strap on my pants. That's done in the field. There's a, always a lot of uh, questions brought up on the different forms about what sharpeners to carry. Well, these are the ones that I like, the ones that have worked for me. There's the other two mentioned real quick is the Chef's Choice and the Lansky. Same principle as the Easy Lap Diamond Rods. Now, the new one, a new one that I picked up is a Hewlett sharpeners diamond sharpeners this one is a bit bulky but it has all three grits in one sharpener you got coarse medium and fine it goes into the handle like that and locks in like i say it is bulky to carry but it's it's a good sharpener comes back out and locks back onto the handle so that gives you all three grits in one sharpener. So if you only want to carry one, this would be the one to get. Now for touching up your edge in the field, if you don't run into a situation where you've chipped your edge or roughed your edge up by hitting a rock or something like that, the tried and true honed steel by Charade. The new ones, from what I've read and heard about, they're not worth a damn. Uh, they're made in China. You can find these on eBay. They are a bit pricey if you do find one. Luckily, I have several of them that I got years ago. And this is a material called chromium carbide, which is harder, is a hard material. I don't know what the Rockwell hardness is on it, but it does real well. Uh, in the uh, using it like a butcher steel and the way I use it is I use the rounded edge here and I do it just like I demonstrated in the first video holding it at, at that high angle just touching the very edge with light pressure and going across the edge like that and flip it over same thing this is a great tool to have on hand in the field if you need to touch your edge up. If you head into the field with a fully sharpened knife, most likely you're not even going to have to mess with your edge unless you're out for a long period of time. Or if you run into a situation where you mess your edge up, whether you're getting into dirt, hitting a rock, maybe you ran into a knot, uh, and dinged your edge up if you have soft, a softer uh, rock well on your blade or if you got a machete or an axe or something like that. Those are softer than what a lot of the, uh, the knives are now. Mine are fairly hard and uh, I usually don't have any issues with that. Um, I like to hone steel during deer season when I'm uh, skinning and butchering deer because it's great. I've used uh, one of my knives this year, the UNK. I used it on uh, three deer and all I really did, and I didn't really need to do it, it was the uh, new S35 VN uh, CPM steel which is a great steel. I absolutely love it. I didn't really need to but I did it after each deer. I just touched the edge up with the charade. The Gerber's another one. I've had this one for a while. This one came in a kit, uh, in a belt sheath with a stone and this steel. It's the same as a charade. These are real hard to find. Uh, they don't make them anymore. I don't even know when they discontinued them, but um, these are tough to find. That's a real good uh, steel.
An another one I picked up recently, and I didn't even know Buck made them, is a Buck Steelmaster. Again, it's exactly the same thing as a charade, chromium carbide. It comes out of the handle, goes back in the handle. This lever locks it into the handle. It, it doesn't click or anything. You have to put thumb pressure on it in order to hold it in. But I like this. This is going to be uh, with me this, this coming deer season uh, because this is really just a cool tool. And I, I like gadgets, I'm a gadget freak, and uh, I really, really like this. I was glad I was able to find it. Now, if you carry a Leatherman, and I think one of the, the probably the most popular Leatherman out there right now is the new Wave. It has, with their file, the regular metal file on this side and on the other side they have a diamond grit which this thing is a fantastic sharpener I've used it I don't use it often but I have used it in the past and it works great and what you can do with the sheaths that Leatherman has I'm only really familiar with the, with the leather sheaths I don't have too many of the Kadura but I think they have these side slots on them uh, you can actually carry, if you carry a Leatherman all the time, you can have both your sharpeners with you handy all the time. And what I do with, with this one is I take the easy lap and it goes into the side slot that they have, the elastic pouch on the side. And this one's broken in, this sheet's really broken in, so it fits in there pretty good. Now, if you carry the larger, like the um, uh, their larger model, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, they have the bigger sheath. So you can, it, this actually fits in the larger sheath a lot better, but it will fit in here. It'll stretch out over time and uh, fit pretty good. So right there you've got your um, Leatherman, with a, a diamond sharpener on the file and you've got your additional sharpener here, your easy lap. On this side you could carry your uh, fire steel like a small, the small light my fires fit in there pretty good. The army model is kind of big for this, it won't, or if you have just a straight rod you can slide it right down in there. Use the uh, saw to spark your rod, the saw works great for doing that. You got yourself a nice little belt kit right here. So that's something that I really like to like to carry. I usually carry um, this on a daily basis. So I've always got a sharpener with me. Uh, the butcher steel. This is kind of crazy. This is a large butcher steel. You can get them. Um, you know, in smaller sizes, of course. I actually have used these also, not the way you typically, typically use a butcher, butcher steel, which is like this. I use it the same way I use the other ones and do it like this. And it works really well. I mean, I've been able to get a hair popping edge on a, on a knife by just using this butcher steel to touch up, but this is <laughs> this isn't something you want to carry into the field. It's it's something you would use at home or in your basement shop or whatever. But it works really well for touching your edges up at home. Uh, I wanted to do a little demo on how I sharpen on my belt grinder. What I do is I start out with to bring the burr up on the edge is I'll start out with the, like I mentioned in a convex grinding video, the 120 grit silicon carbide belt. And what this does with a knife that's just, you're just putting the edge back on it or just resharpening, not like when I'm uh, adding the micro bevel when I'm 
making a knife that's getting ready to be finished and go out the door. If I'm just resharpening a knife, I uh, use this belt to bring the burr up on the edge. Usually, depending on how bad the edge is, it only takes maybe two, two passes on each side. I can bring the burr up. As I'm looking down and, and uh, going across the belt, I can see the burr coming up and riding along the edge. So this is how I do it. I don't hopefully be able to see it in this. It's hard to adjust the camera angle to get, you know, to be able to see what I'm doing, but hopefully be able to see. feel you run your thumb along there you can feel the burr coming up now what I'll do is I'll switch over to a fine belt to finish it off to clean the burr off and put the fine edge on it and with the fine scotch brake belt I use a compound a white compound. I believe this is 600 grit aluminum oxide. Now I have a leather belt that goes on here, but I don't really, it works, but it seems like the Scotch-Brite belt works better bringing up a good edge on it. And what I've done over time, it's loaded up this compound into this belt just from, from going across. I'll start the grinder up and then just run this across. until I get the burr off of it and you can feel a nice smooth edge and then I'll test it on paper to make sure I got a good edge on it. But usually if someone brings in a, a knife for me to resharpen, I'm ending up reprofiling their edge to a convex edge and I explain to them how it wor it'll work better, it'll last longer, they can maintain it by stropping it. Um, I also will demonstrate how I hand sharpen with the type of edges I put on my knives so that if they want to, they can maintain it themselves. If not, they can just bring it back and I'll redo it. As far as my technique of sharpening, it can be done with traditional V-bevels. Most V-bevels are anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees, depending on the maker, depending on the manufacturer. You have to know what that angle is in order to maintain that angle when you're using my method of sharpening. Um, most people have learned how to do it on a stone or a flat type of sharpener. It can be done with the round sharpeners if you maintain that angle. It's the same thing with the convex edge. You have to maintain the proper angle, which on a convex edge is steeper than what it is on a preset angle V-bevel edge. There's, there's less room for error with a convex edge than there is with the, the V-bevel edge. You've got, um, as long as you're just hitting the very edge, you're going to be fine with light pressure. You don't want to push too hard. If you push too hard, you're going to round it off and then you're going to end up with a dull knife and it's going to have to be reprofiled all, all over again. So these are sharpeners that have worked for me. They're ones that I like. Of course, I've got a load of them because I, I even probably am a collector of sharpeners. I do have some stones. I don't use stones very often anymore because of the way I do my edges. So hopefully this will enlighten people to how I, I sharpen and also uh, different sharpeners you can carry into the field and how well they work. Uh, with a little bit of practice, sharpening is a skill that you have to learn, you have to practice just like anything else. If you never sharpened before, uh, you're not going to be able to pick a sharpener up and know how to do it right away. You, you've got to learn. 
uh, a technique and you have to get it down and you also have to know uh, what the angles are on the knife you're trying to sharpen. If you want to have it, if you want to reprofile it, that's going to take a long time by hand. It's a heck of a lot faster if you've got a belt grinder. So I hope this uh, will help out anyone who needs to uh, learn how to sharpen in the field.